highly defensive. That's how a federal court judge described the ABC's investigations team in a ruling handed down on Monday. Justice Michael Lee found that the public broadcaster defamed former commando Heston Russell and handed him a $390,000 payout plus likely costs. In today's episode, we unpack how the ABC lost the defamation battle and went to war with itself. If you're on social media, you might have noticed this guy. Hey, g'day everyone. Hard to stay quiet with everything that's going on. It's Heston Russell, a very buff, very articulate former Special Forces officer who has a huge following and opinions about everything, from politics to fitness, with a special interest in the mental health of war veterans. Here he is on Twitter. And any dickhead who calls the Hamas militants or freedom fighters or anything else, you're an idiot. Because turning up to a concert and murdering young guys and girls in their hundreds is terrorism. And you deserve everything that comes to you. In 2021, Russell went on TV to identify himself as the commander of a platoon that had been accused of war crimes. You were the commanding officer. Mm Mm-hmm with the platoon all the time. Yep. And you never saw anything that has been alleged. Absolutely. That is correct. It was about a story on the ABC published online a few days earlier that had been a devastating catalogue of alleged offences by Australian soldiers. The ABC's source was a former US Marine known only as Josh. He said he heard Australian troops on a radio executing an Afghan prisoner who was in their custody. The Australian platoon had requested transport from Josh's US platoon. The Americans only had space for the Australians and six prisoners, but there were seven Afghans in their custody. And you just heard a silence, and then we heard a pop, and then they said, OK, we have six prisoners. So it was pretty apparent to everybody involved in that mission that they had just killed a prisoner. Josh didn't say he'd seen this himself, only that he'd heard a pop. Josh had sent the ABC's Mark Willisey an unsolicited email in July of 2020. It said Australian soldiers had left burning villages and dead bodies in their wake. But he also said... My memory is fuzzy enough anyways when it comes to giving specific enough details to go on. We've asked a voice actor to read Josh's words. Willisey emailed Josh, who replied... It all happened a long time ago in the midst of constant combat operations where I had very little sleep and was constantly working with people from different units and countries. So I likely won't be able to provide you with actionable information that could go anywhere useful in any specific investigations. Only the bits and pieces I remember. Willisey told the court he found Josh's candour impressive and felt more inclined to believe him because he was open about what he hadn't seen. The problem was Josh didn't actually know who had committed this alleged murder, just that they were Australian commandos. Willisey believed it was the Australian Army's 2nd Commando Regiment, Alpha Company, known as November Platoon which had already been the subject of stories in the media about alleged war crimes committed in Afghanistan. In October of that year, Willisey published Josh's allegations in an article on the ABC's website. It said unnamed Australian commandos allegedly shot an unarmed prisoner and that November platoon had a bad reputation among the Americans based on their behaviour in the field. Just over a year later, in November of 2021, the ABC investigations team published a second article revealing that a criminal investigation into allegations against November platoon was underway. That second article was written by a journalist named Josh Robertson. Neither article mentioned Josh, the US Marine's admission he didn't know who had committed this alleged murder. Heston Russell, the commander of November platoon, was also never contacted for comment. He vehemently denies the allegations, and he took the ABC to court for defamation and won. Heston Russell sued the National Broadcaster over articles published in 2020 and 2021. Mr Russell has been awarded $390,000 in damages. 
Justice Michael Lee made a big deal about the fact that if Mark Willisie was being true to his readers, then he should have included that caveat and should have been truthful about the evidence that Josh was giving them rather than acting like Josh had said these things with a clear mind and a clear understanding of these things that had happened almost 10 years ago. Ellie Dudley is the Australian's legal affairs correspondent. Justice Lee also had a go specifically at Josh Robertson, the second journalist who was listed as a respondent, for not going to Heston Russell for a response for the November 2021 article. He said that Robertson had acted unreasonably and said that he didn't procure all the information that he should have before he went to publish. And it was a massive issue for Heston Russell throughout this trial. He was incredibly upset by the fact that he wasn't sought comment from. Despite the judge flaying the ABC, he's also been pretty hard on Heston Russell himself. He described him as a poor witness. Why? Yeah, so he said that Heston Russell was a completely unreliable witness and dismissed his evidence at the end, said that he couldn't rely on it at all. And that was due to the fact that when Heston Russell was in the stand, he gave false evidence. So there were questions about money that he had raised through OnlyFans that he was going to give to a veteran's charity. OnlyFans is a pay-per-view internet platform where content creators charge viewers for access to pictures and video. There is, not surprisingly, quite a lot of porn on it. But Heston Russell's profile describes his content as shirtless workouts, puppy moments, dad jokes and private conversations. Sorry to dwell on this, but there's an intriguing note in Heston Russell's OnlyFans profile. It asks... Did you give or sell a naked photo of me to a journalist from the ABC? Contact me directly with the screenshots and you'll be rewarded. Time to expose the journalist. He gave an invoice that proved that he had donated a full sum to that veterans charity. And it turns out that he had doctored that invoice and had lied on the stand about whether or not he had doctored that invoice. As a result of that, Justice Lee found him unreliable and dismissed his evidence. It's quite amazing that Justice Lee found so comprehensively in favour of Mr Russell, isn't it, when he had dismissed his credibility? It's absolutely incredible that he still found in favour of Heston Russell, but I think that that's indicative of how disappointing he found the ABC's reporting. Coming up, why the ABC went to war with itself over this story. judgment handed down on Monday, Justice Michael Lee identified what he called two striking points. Which go some way in explaining why this matter has proceeded to a trial. The first is the suspicion harboured by Mr Willisey, Mr Robertson and Ms Puccini at various times of wrongful conduct by the November platoon in general and Mr Russell in particular. The second is the view held within ABC investigations that criticism of the October and November articles had become a proxy for a broader culture war attack on the war crimes reporting of ABC investigations. We've used a voice actor to bring you Justice Lee's words. Essentially, the judge is saying the ABC was convinced the soldiers were guilty, and because of that, they felt any criticism of their reporting was unfounded. And there was plenty of criticism on Sydney's 2GB radio... They refused to apologise. There were many other dates along the way when anyone with a brain would have realised that they stuffed this thing up. And on the ABC's own Media Watch program. We're not convinced that Russell is a war hero, but the ABC has certainly failed to persuade the federal court that he's a killer and to defend the stories which got them into trouble. And what to make of it all? Well, from the outside, it looks like a right royal mess. The Media Watch story enraged Mark Willisey and the ABC's investigative unit and resulted in a complaint to the ABC's internal complaints unit. The ABC has done a lot of reporting about alleged war crimes committed by Australian soldiers and we've seen another court judgement very strongly in favour of exposure of those alleged offences in the Ben Robert Smith case. Lawyers for Ben Robert Smith could appeal the judgment within weeks after losing the biggest defamation trial in Australian history. A judge found newspapers substantially proved the decorated soldier committed serious war crimes in Afghanistan. 
So it was easy to draw conclusions between the two. And what became evident from those watching and also what became evident on Monday when Justice Michael Lee handed down his judgment was that they're apples and oranges. The two really can't be compared besides the fact that they're about war crime reporting. The ABC lost on a significant point of tactics during these proceedings. They tried to run a defence that the stories were true. The judge struck out that defence, which meant they had to run a different defence, that this reporting was in the public interest. That's a new type of defence to defamation, and it requires that the judge believe the journalist's action in publishing the story was reasonable. Justice Lee found the public interest defence didn't stack up in this case, that although the journalists believed they were reporting in the public interest, their belief was not reasonable in this case. The ABC had submitted in court that the strong public interest in this matter meant it should still be published, even if it risked being inaccurate. The judge dismissed this, saying public interest could never outweigh the need to establish truth. While Justice Lee said that he had no doubt that Mark Willisie believed that the publication was in the public interest, having regard to the information that he had available to him as to Josh's allegations, the seriousness of the allegations that he was reporting, his drafting choices in light of the information before him, Mark Wilson wasn't able to establish a public interest defence because he wasn't able to publish something that was entirely factual and also in the public interest. Josh's identity was a particularly contentious part of the trial. The ABC never used his real name in any of their reporting, but they did publish images and videos of him. Heston Russell's defence barrister argued that meant anyone with a few basic Google skills could figure out who he was and therefore identify the Australian troops he'd served alongside in Afghanistan. And so couldn't quite understand why Mark Willisie and the ABC investigations team were holding so close to this confidential source. And so basically what happened is the ABC got backed into a corner and they were told that you need to identify this source or else you're doomed to failure, basically. The ABC then said, well, we're going to drop our public interest defence, which was the only course of action they had. And they let out this press release, which Justice Lee completely slammed in his judgment that he released on Monday. In the press release, the ABC said it wouldn't reveal its sources, even under pressure from the court. But the thing is, that's not what was happening. But Justice Lee said that that press release was completely misleading. He said that it was an exercise in damage control expressed in such a way as to hold up ABC investigations as an exemplar of journalistic standards. And he said that the ABC wanted to promote the message that the court was forcing journalists to reveal their sources when, in truth, the ABC has been responsible for its inability to maintain the statutory source privilege. So he just absolutely panned the ABC for the fact that they made it seem like the court was trying to force them to out their sources when, in fact, it was their fault that they had ended up in this position. Oh, and then this happened. What was interesting, though, and because so much of this case is about the identification of this unnamed witness, Josh, is that Mark Willisie accidentally named him twice throughout his time giving evidence, which was particularly interesting when these ABC journalists are talking about how important it is to protect their confidential sources. And then they name them twice in a court hearing that's not only being heard in open court, but has also been live streamed across the country. The judgment is tough reading for ABC management. At various times, it describes the organisation as supercilious and highly defensive. I think it shows that they don't like attacks on their journalism, especially when it comes to something as serious as war crimes. This happened after the Burton inquiry and it showed the importance of reporting on things like war crimes and showing that they are highly in the public interest. And so you could tell that by the time that the November article came along and that they felt like they could publish this article saying that there was an investigation going into the November platoon, they felt vindicated. And so they rushed to publish that article in order to have some sense of vindication. And I think that that's something that Justice Lee pointed out really clearly in his judgment is that they felt like they were under attack. They felt like they were being criticised. They felt like there was this culture war going on between tabloid journalists or 2GP or Media Watch, whoever it is, and the ABC are uh, fighting off these people who are trying to tear them down. And so they needed that sense of vindication and that's why they published that November article.
Ellie Dudley is The Australian's legal affairs correspondent. Thanks for joining us on The Front. You can follow the unfolding situation in the Middle East right now at theaustralian.com.au.